In 2010, the UK recycled 31.5% of its waste plastics, sending almost two-thirds of it to landfill. With new EU targets to increase plastic recycling by 5% each year from 2013 to 2017, pressure is on more than ever to focus on recycling where possible. But is this newfound recycling boom simply due to targets that need to be met, or is it due to a deeper need to make our lifestyles more sustainable and eco-friendly? I'm Alex, and um, this video is going to be all about plastics, what they're made of, how they're synthesised, and finally how we can recycle them. Plastics are made from photosynthetic polymers. A polymer is a macromolecule made up of competing units called monomers. When these monomers link together covalently to form a polymer, it's known as polymerisation. We're going to be focusing on chain growth polymerisation. Herman Staudinger was the first scientist to characterise polymers as we know them today, despite being ridiculed by his peers. He recognised that there were giant macromolecules with high molar masses as opposed to an accumulation of many smaller molecules, which was a widely accepted theory at the time. His pioneering work led to him being awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1953. This is the monomer ethene. It can be polymerised to form polyethene. One method in which this can be done is called chain growth polymerisation, which can be split into three different groups. Free radical polymerisation, cationic polymerisation and anionic polymerisation. We're going to focus on free radical. Free radical polymerisation occurs when an alkene double bond homolytically opens. Initiation is instigated by a molecule with an unpaired electron, such as a peroxide that is stable at room temperature. When the oxygen single bond is broken, a radical is formed. This active radical is what reacts with the alkene Propagation then occurs. This is when the terminal radical reacts with another monomer, adding it to the chain and creating another radical as shown here. This is an extremely fast method of polymerisation and is therefore quite difficult to control. Termination can occur through two mechanisms called chain combination and disproportionation. When chain combination occurs, two polymer chains with radicals combine to form one chain. When disproportionation occurs, an alkene is formed at the end of one chain, whilst an alkane is formed at the end of another. Polythene is commonly used as a material for bags, food packaging, and can even be found in bulletproof vests. So why do we need to recycle? Why can't we just keep on making new plastic? Plastics are made from oil, which is a fossil fuel, and thus non-renewable. This means that there's a limited supply of the resource. At the moment, it's estimated that if we continue consumption at this rate, we have about 40 years of oil left. Extracting and processing this oil is detrimental to the environment, even before the issue of landfills. And so renewable sources are constantly being sought after, such as biomass. One of the best ways we can recycle plastics is to reuse them. Many of us already do this every day when we use plastic bottles, microwaveable food containers or plastic bags. Recent legislation has been put in place in Wales to encourage people to reuse their plastic bags. For example, a mandatory 5p charge has been placed on all bags to encourage people to buy more substantial plastic bags or canvas bags that can be reused as opposed to the thin plastic ones you normally get in the supermarket. These can probably be used once or twice if you put heavy objects in them and they die pretty quickly. Plastics can be separated into seven different categories based on how easily they can be recycled and whether or not they give off any toxic byproducts. Categories 1 and 2, polyethylene terephthalate and high density polyethylene, are the easiest to recycle. These are commonly used in food and drinks packaging and plastic containers. Numbers 3, 4, and 5, polyvinyl chloride low-density polypropylene and polypropylene are quite difficult to recycle or have some toxic byproducts. These plastics can be found in vinyl records, microwavable containers and squeezable bottles. Polystyrene is number six. Although this is becoming easier to recycle, its weight to volume ratio makes it difficult to justify due to the space it would take up in the recycling trucks. This plastic can commonly be found in egg cartons and disposable cups. And finally, category seven, other. 
These are often mixtures of plastics that are extremely difficult to separate and are so almost never recycled. This includes sunglasses, compact discs and even riot shields. So how is plastic actually recycled? Recyclable plastic waste is collected from your front door, like your rubbish, or from receptacles at supermarkets. This plastic is then washed and sorted at the facility. This can be done by grinding the plastic into chips and then immersing it in water. The more dense chips will sink to the bottom and then can be separated from the lighter chips which will float. The plastic chips are then melted. Due to the different melting points of the plastics, they can be separated even further. The plastics are then made into pellets and these are sold to other companies to make products. Here are just some of the items that can be made from recycled plastics. It's not that easy being green It seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things And people tend to pass you over Cause you're not standing out like flashy sparkles in the water Or stars in the sky But green's the color of spring and green can be cool and friendly like And green can be big like an ocean Or important like a mountain Or tall like a tree Despite our advances in recycling, the question of whether or not it is worth doing is still quite undecided. Although it would seem obvious that recycling plastics is much more eco-friendly than producing new plastics, a small study at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology has shown that over a range of different materials, the energy used to recycle the product is more or almost as much as just producing new ones. This study not only included the recycling of the products, but the efficiency of its recycled use. For example, a recycled tyre will cause a car to consume more fuel in its lifetime than a new superior tyre. Combine that with the energy needed to transport and recycle a tyre and the benefit is almost negligible. However, this is only a small study over a range of different materials, so a clear conclusion cannot be drawn. It is obvious, however, that more research is needed in this area, so we can more efficiently recycle our plastic goods. Well, that's it, thank you for watching my video. I hope you're feeling a little bit more informed about polymers and plastics. And please, please remember to reduce, reuse and recycle. Come on and let me hear you say bags! Bags!